everyone this video is about the feed fast cycle right so i'm going to tell you in short about all the points that you need to know under feed fast cycle right so we have different organs important organs which help which are important in this feed fast cycle with respect to various metabolic pathways right so what are the different organs that we're going to see right it is a liver yes adipose tissue skeletal muscle yes brain and kidney so what happens in these organs with respect to various metabolic pathways especially carbohydrate metabolism lipid metabolism and protein metabolism yes this makes up this feed fast cycle so what happens in fed state in all these organs with respect to these metabolic pathways and what happens in the fasting state in all these organs with respect to this metabolic pathways is what we are going to see right so in the fed state what happens in the fed state what is the fed state fed state is nothing but it is the absorptive state it is 2 to 4 hours of food intake yes it is about 2 to 4 hours of food intake in which case your since you have had food your plasma glucose will be high amino acids will be high and the main hormone which is important in the fed state is going to be insulin what is the main hormone which is going to be important here insulin right so let's see the liver in the fed state yes the first organ liver what happens in the fed state what happens to the carbohydrate metabolism lipid metabolism amino acid metabolism okay so since we all know in the fed state what is the hormone that is important it is the insulin which is important so insulin insulin stimulates glycolysis yes we have excess glucose from the diet we are about to break this glucose for energy purposes so glycolysis is going to be active and excess of glucose is going to be stored in the form of glycogen so glycogen synthesis pathway is going to be active right also it is involved in fatty acid synthesis yes and also protein synthesis right so if you take glucose so glucose from the diet is going to enter the liver and it is going to get converted to glucose 6 phosphate and the end product of glycolysis which is pyruvate and pyruvate gets converted to acetyl choline if you want energy to be uh, energy in the form of ATP, then acetyl CoA has to enter TCA cycle after which to electron transport chain and ATP is formed. Now, in, uh, this is one pathway which is glycolysis. The second pathway is glucose 6-phosphate formed it can be channeled to hexose monophosphate shunt pathway. Right? What is the significance of this pathway? Significance of this pathway is production of NADPH. Right? Production of NADPH and NADPH is necessary for fatty acid synthesis. Right? And also it is necessary for production of pentosis. Yes. And this, uh, this, this is another pathway. The next pathway is excess of glucose is stored in the form of glycogen. Yes, so glycogen synthesis is going to be active here. Okay, now as you have the diet, as you have glucose in the diet, all of the nutrients from the diet is going to be, uh, it, is going, uh, it is going to come to the liver in the first place through the portal circulation. Okay, but you don't want the liver to take up all of the nutrients. Yes, so the glucose which is coming to the liver, only some amount of glucose is being utilized and rest of the nutrients have to be diverted to all other tissues. Yes, for that only you have this glucokinase enzyme here. Yes, glucokinase has low affinity for glucose. Why? Because only during high, very high plasma levels of glucose, this will come into play to maintain blood glucose level. Otherwise, it will utilize the glucose which is needed for the liver, small amount of glucose which is only needed for the liver and rest of it is going to be, uh, it is going to be diverted to other tissues. Yes. And finally, when the, there is excess of glucose, the glucose is going to be stored in the form of glycogen. So in the carbohydrate metabolism, in liver, in fed state, glycolysis is going to be active, glycogen synthesis is going to be active, then pentose phosphate pathway will take place 
yes so these are the three pathways concerning carbohydrate metabolism now what happens to the amino acids from the gut amino acids from the gut yes they are going to enter into the liver they will be used up for protein synthesis okay and they can be removed the amino group from the amino acids can be removed and the carbon skeleton can be utilized in the formation of pyruvate and other intermediates of tca cycle and that will be channeled to energy production right and the next one is your fat so what happens to your fat your fat will be the triacylglycerol dietary triacylglycerol will be packed in chylomicron chylomicron enters the lymphatic tissues lymphatic tissues from it it enters the systemic circulation it goes to adipose tissue skeletal muscle and then the chylomicron becomes chylomicron remnant after which it reaches the liver right so in the liver what happens the fatty acids are let out the fatty acids with glycerol can form triacylglycerol the triacylglycerol which is present in the liver these are endogenous triacylglycerol and those endogenous along with these endogenous triacylglycerol be packed into vldl and the vldl will be released into the circulation where does this vldl go it will again go to the adipose tissue okay that we will see in the next slide so this is what happens in the liver and also the acetyl coa which is formed yes acetyl coa is the substrate for fatty acid synthesis so acetyl coa which is formed is involved in the fatty acid synthesis here fatty acid synthesis here okay right so this is what is the uh, this is so in fatty acid synthesis what have fatty acid synthesis happens which is from the acetyl coa yes and triacylglycerol synthesis which can be packed into the vldl and is let out yes and amino acid metabolism what happens it is ch channeled to protein synthesis yes so this is what these are the major pathways which happen in the liver during the fat state you get this the next one is adipose tissue what happens in adipose tissue in the fat state right so adipose tissue mainly the glucose will enter the adipocyte glucose to glucose 6 phosphate to pyruvate the pyruvate becomes acetyl coa acetyl coa enters the tca cycle this is this we have already seen so it's a glycolysis then to tca cycle right also the glucose 6 phosphate can be used up in the pentose phosphate pathway right and then acetyl coa which is formed excess acetyl coa which is formed forms fatty acids right and fatty acid with glycerol can form triacylglycerol yes so triacylglycerol is stored in the adipose tissue so excess of glucose excess of carbohydrate in the diet can be stored as triacylglycerol in the adipose tissue do you get this right so next the vldl from the liver can even come to the adipose tissue give off fatty acids that can also be channeled to triacylglycerol synthesis also chylomicron remnants from the liver sorry chylomicron remnants from the um, sorry chylomicron from the gut i we have discussed earlier chylomicron from the gut it goes to the adipose tissue skeletal muscle first is it not so there where it releases the fatty acids yes so chylomicrons from the gut it goes to the peripheral tissues here it's acted upon by lipoprotein lipase wherein it converts triacylglycerol to fatty acids and glycerol and these fatty acids again can be channeled to the production of triacylglycerol inside the adipose tissue and it gets stored right so ultimately what's the purpose of adipose tissue in fed state if there is excess of carbohydrates all of which will be stored in the form of triacylglycerol all right the next one is skeletal muscle in the fat state so what happens to skeletal muscle in the fat state again the glucose that we were having in the diet is entering into the skeletal muscle it forms pyruvate and acetyl coa and tca cycle and is used up for energy right so which are the two organs which are necessary for glycogen synthesis one is liver glycogen the second one is muscle glycogen right so even in the muscle the glucose is going to be stored in the form of glycogen but which glycogen helps in regulation of blood glucose only liver glycogen is going to help us in regulating the blood glucose and not the muscle glycogen right yes so muscle so for uh, what are the carbohydrate metabolism which is taking place in the taking place in the skeletal muscle in fat state it is the glycolysis and then the muscle glycogen synthesis 
all right then the amino acids including the branched chain amino acids yes these amino acids are uh, involved in the protein synthesis muscle protein synthesis do you get this this is what happens in skeletal muscle in the fed state right next organ is brain in the fed state so brain in the fed state of course it is going to use the glucose so brain always uses glucose predominantly it uses glucose during the prolonged starvation phase only it can use amount of some amount of ketone bodies and not otherwise it cannot use fatty acids okay so it uses only glucose so glucose from the diet enters gluc forms glucose 6 phosphate to pyruvate then to acetyl coate forms tca cycle and used up for energy do you get this so these are the important pathways in these four organs which have uh, in the fed state okay so now let's see this uh, let's see this chart so in the fed state in the intestine you have this glucose fats which are packed in the form of chylomicrons and then amino acids from the diet yes and the hormone which is going to be increased in fed state is insulin so from the uh, glucose from your diet enters the liver it can enter into teeth uh, you know uh, glycolysis forms acetyl coa and acetyl coa can enter tca cycle then to electron transport chain yes and all, the second one is it can form glycogen and forms uh, in the form of liver liver glycogen it gets stored then the acetyl coa excess acetyl coa can form triacylglycerol this triacylglycerol can be packed into vldl right so now the glucose in the circulation again enters the brain where it is used up for the energy production in the brain and in rbc what happens gets converted to pyruvate pyruvate to lactate anaerobic glycolysis can take place then the glucose yes then uh, rest of the glucose once it enters the muscle it forms again for energy production then muscle glycogen right and then it can even enter the adipose tissue in adipose tissue what can happen it is forming acetyl coa acetyl coa to uh, your fatty acids fatty acids with glycerol can form triacylglycerol so excess of glucose can be stored in the form of triacylglycerol right and similarly vldl from the liver again enters to the adipose tissue it can again uh, i mean uh, it breaks down then it can again form this triacylglycerol and get stored and to other tissues even the amino acids can go to the other tissues or even it can go to the liver yes where it is uh, all getting used up for the protein synthesis okay and for the tca it can even enter tca cycle and for atp production so this is the overall integration of metabolism which is happening in the fed state yes yeah so the next thing which we will see is the about the fasting state right 